Norman Flurry's turn to floods local veteran homelessness comes to an end and gun law rallies are spreading across the nation. This is OU Nightly. Soggy sidewalks in Soonerland. Today we see another day of rain on the OU campus. Enough to hopefully make a dent in our drought. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Nicole Nielsen. And I'm Storm Jones. Over the past week, Norman has seen nearly every season. And Marissa Nuzzo is here to tell us if the rain is going to stick around. Marissa? Yeah, guys, looking at what's going on right now, this is a radar loop of the past six hours, and we are kind of sick of seeing rain, and thankfully it's starting to finally move out of, out of our area, but it was intensifying a little bit throughout the, out the day, mostly being impacted in the southeasternmost portion of the state, and also around the country, this is really the only thing we've got going on. Everything else is pretty much calm, so Oklahoma is getting a lot of the national attention right now with all of this rain and the panhandle not getting anything. And those rainfall totals the past 24 hours, 0.3 inches here in Norman, almost a whole inch out in McAllister. And we are going to get a little bit more rain coming in the next couple of days. I will give you all the details on more rain chances, those spring temperatures coming our way, and when we're going to be finally clearing up. Back to you guys. Thank you, Marissa. Now on to an incredible accomplishment in Norman. Today, the city announced that it has effectively ended veteran homelessness. Amina Schweitzer attended today's meeting and joins us now with details. Amina. Nicole, we all know what a big issue veteran homelessness is, not just here in Norman, but across the country. But today, Norman took a big step towards ending the problem. Today, I am so happy to be the one that gets to announce that the city of Norman, Cleveland County has effectively ended veteran homelessness. At today's meeting, Mayor Lynn Miller announced that the city of Norman now has sufficient resources to provide housing for every homeless veteran. Norman officials came together to celebrate the city's accomplishments and recognize some of the people that made the move possible. And in other cities, they stopped believing, but this community never did. And it has been an honor and a privilege to be part of the VA and part of the city of Norman and part of hopefully one of the very, very many cities that accomplishes this goal. Among the agencies across Cleveland County supporting this effort is Goodwill Industries. That group helps homeless veterans by working to provide them with jobs. A great team effort for 30 different agencies in the Norman area. Back to you. All right, thanks, Amina. A great accomplishment. Gun laws taking center stage at the state capitol today. A group of roughly 130 people from the group Moms Demand Action from across Oklahoma gathered this morning. The group says they were trying to meet with lawmakers to discuss gun reform. I think the tide is turning, not just in Oklahoma but across the country, that it's time to keep Oklahomans safe. I have children in school and I think we ask enough of our teachers, you know, to, to put sharpshooter on that list is really not something that we should be doing. We, we need to let them do their jobs. A handful of bills regarding guns are being heard this legislative session. And in the wake of the massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, teachers across the nation are facing a harsh new reality. OU Knightley's Will Cornelius has more with the educators who are ready to put their bodies on the line. Mentors, educators, and now bodyguards. It's not something you would expect to find in the job description of a teacher, but it is a duty that is becoming all too real for the educators of tomorrow. I think it definitely is like a reality check that like, you know, in the past it's only been one here and there, and then recently it's becoming a more common thing. It's such a real thing that can happen, and it could happen to me. Paige Wood says she has accepted that one of her responsibilities as a teacher is to protect her students at all times. My first reaction will be whatever it takes to, to save the students. One concern is in states facing teacher shortages, like Oklahoma, where schools may hire teachers that view it more as a job and not a calling. So they'll go and they'll get hired and they have no experience and may not even be good with kids. Like if those people are up at the front of the classroom and there's a shooter coming in, I'm not sure what their response would be. Dr. Lawrence Baines is an associate dean at OU's College of Education. 
He believes there needs to be a social change in America before we will see a decline in school shootings. If we have a proliferation of guns in this country, we've got more guns than we do human beings. Our kids' lives are in danger. We don't want people who are crazy walking around with weapons. Regardless of the risk, education master's student Braven Thomas says he's as passionate as ever about pursuing his career. I want to work with adolescent teens and stuff that are going through those troublesome peer relationships and help them show that there are other people out there who care and that you can always come to talk to somebody and I promise you you're not alone. Thomas has not faced a situation like the one in Florida, but says he knows what he will do if that moment comes. No one's child deserves to die. It, that's just what I believe. The child comes first. And if that's willing that I have to step in front of them, I'm willing to do that. Will Cornelius, OU Knightley. Students across Oklahoma will gather at the Capitol on March 24th in support of the students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. And we're learning more about the Parkland, Florida shooting. Lauren Linville has the details. Lauren, what? Yes, Storm, new updates from Florida law enforcement today regarding the Parkland shooting investigation. The law enforcement official says the gunman had 180 rounds of ammunition left and had swastikas drawn in his rifle magazine. Investigators also say the shooter tried to break a window at the high school, presumably to take up a, a sniper position, but he was unsuccessful because it was hurricane, hurricane proof. In the wake of the shooting today, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders addressed the concern of the age limit to purchase a gun. The president still supports raising the age limit to 21 for the purchase of certain firearms. We're meeting with bipartisan members of Congress tomorrow. Uh, we expect that to be a topic of discussion. Sanders did not go into specifics regarding which firearms, but says more will be revealed later this week. And since the shooting, a list of businesses have stepped away from the NRA, including Delta Airlines. This weekend, Delta announced it will eliminate a discount fare program for the NRA. Georgia Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle stepped in, threatening to kill a proposed tax cut for the company. I'm tired of conservatives being kicked around on our values, and it's time that we stand up and fight and show corporations that conservative values uh, are important. In response to Kegel's threats, Virginia's Governor Ralph Nornham tweeted, Hey Delta, Virginia is for lovers and airline hubs. You're welcome here anytime. And the New York governor got in on the action with her own tweet. And Nicole and Storm White House sources say President Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, had his security clearance downgraded, losing access to top secret intelligence. Thank you, Lauren. Still to come on OU Nightly, rain, rain, will it go away? Marissa has the full forecast for the rest of the week coming up. Plus, an electric SUV may soon be coming to a showroom near you. Stay with us. Welcome back. An Oklahoma oil and gas company is shedding nearly 30% of its Oklahoma City workforce. Sandridge Energy is laying off 80 employees less than a week after announcing budget cuts. CEO Bill Griffin says the company's new vision requires cutting administrative costs by nearly $40 million annually. Sandridge now has fewer than 400 employees company-wide. And the new face of the Federal Reserve spoke earlier today. Colin Kennedy has more in Money Matters. Colin. Thank you, Storm. New Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell makes his Capitol Hill debut today. The head of the Federal Reserve addresses Congress twice a year and reports on the country's economy. Powell gave his testimony at 8.30 Eastern this morning and said that there are three federal rate heights expected for 2018, and then two more the following year. Overall, however, the Fed seems optimistic about the growth of the economy. Meanwhile, President Trump and Boeing have reached an agreement on the production of two new presidential planes. The president is hoping to have these new aircraft by 2021, which would be the beginning of his potential second term. The price tag for these new planes is $3.9 billion, and some are saying this would save taxpayers over $1 billion. And while this is another new form of transportation that may not be as shocking as two new billion-dollar planes, there's still plenty of electricity. Hyundai has unveiled a new all-electric SUV, the Kona... The Kona Electric will debut next week at the Geneva Motor Show in Switzerland. On standard battery power, it will be able to travel 186 miles. And on high capacity battery, it will be able to travel up to 292 miles. The SUV will have a digital dashboard, a 7-inch touchscreen, and eventually a price tag. And guys, I don't know if you actually know this, but I used to drive an electric SUV myself. 
and then I hopped out of my big wheel, burned through a couple birthdays, and now here I am putting gas in my big boy car. So the chances of me driving an electric car, pretty shocking if what's, I actually do end up. What's your big boy car? What do you drive now? Drive a uh, Chevy Silverado. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Yeah. Hey, I have noticed um, on OU's campus in the new parking garage, they have some of those charging ports for yeah. electric vehicles. That could be really neat. Uh, yeah, if you end up being able to purchase one of those electric yeah, vehicles, no it'd be pretty yet? comfortable. No price tag yet, but from what I've heard, it's going to be top dollar, right. which isn't nice. shocking. They're accommodating students a little bit for that, so that's yeah. Yeah. good for OU. Yeah, there we go. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Colin. And still on OU Nightly, a California morning newscast goes afoul. And Marissa has more on the wet weather. Marissa? That's right, guys. A little bit more rain in the forecast, but I'll be sure to give you all of the details coming up next. And welcome back to OU Nightly. We're taking a live look outside right now at our Norman Cam, and it is still very gloomy outside. We are experiencing those on and off showers all day, and right now they're off, so we have those overcast skies, winds out of the south. Dew point exactly at 56 degrees means it's very muggy, very kind of sticky and gross out there since it's been raining all day. Still feels like it's raining even if there isn't rain coming down from the sky right now. So now let's take a look at what it's going to be like for the rest of the evening. We do have three icons for all rain, but that's probably not going to be the case for most of the state. For Norman, those scattered showers are going to be on and off, but probably not for the entire evening. More to the southeastern portion of the state, this is going to be what your evening planner would look like. And as you notice, it's actually going to heat up to 59 degrees by midnight, which seems unusual, but since we have that cloud cover keeping us warm all night, it acts as a blanket keeping that heat from escaping into our atmosphere. So tonight, it's gonna stay warm and get up, or it's gonna only get down to about 57 in Norman, and that's gonna be the case for most of the state. 64 is a low in McAllister, and it's gonna stay kind of warm tonight. See, our normal is usually 36, so those clouds are going to keep us fairly warm tonight. So now let's break down our next 48 hours. We have this low pressure system that's gonna spawn a cold front that's gonna come in to our area sometime during the day on Wednesday. See these scattered showers that are going to continue throughout the night tonight into the early morning hours, but that is for this southeastern portion of the state, likely not Norman or Tulsa. And then this cold front's gonna come through and it's gonna move all of that moisture out of our way. And it's gonna clear us out for Thursday and Friday into the weekend. And after that whole system is said and done, we are going to have about 1.2 inches of rain in Idabel and about a 10th of an inch and it's a little scattered, but not even anything registering out in the western portion of the state. And our, how this cold front's going to affect our temperatures is kind of strange. It is going to come through, see those overnight lows tonight not getting down too low. And we can see this cold front just chilling out. And as it comes through, it's really not going to do too much. Our temperatures are going to go right back to normal for our high temperatures on Thursday and your day planner walking out the door tomorrow, maybe a little bit of scattered showers early in the morning, those overcast skies, and then heating up to 66 degrees here in Norman. Those warmer temperatures are going to linger throughout the day as we do have those clouds keeping us warm. The morning showers tomorrow a little bit muggy, one more day of muggy, and then finally a clear day coming our way for Thursday. Thursday and Friday looks like it's going to be pretty clear, which is something I know everyone's looking forward to. It's kind of horrible walking to class in the rain, and I'm sure everyone is just sick of the rain by now. So finally, Thursday and Friday, clear skies, maybe some rain chances coming in a little bit early next week, but we do have some clear days. In, in the schedule for next week. And spring doesn't even start until March. This is still, we're still in winter. So we are still just in winter, check. but we're starting to feel like spring here. Is there any it? chance maybe the flooding is going to clear up a little bit? Because it's a gotten pretty bit, bad. As the sun comes out, it starts to evaporate things. The flooding will go down a little bit, but if it continues, if we continue this pattern with cold fronts coming in and right. warm temperatures easing in and out, flooding may continue to be a problem, but it's better than the alternative for the drought and the fires. Yeah. At least we're getting some sun. All mm -hmm. right. Thanks, Marissa. And Trey Young and the Sooners have another big game in uh, in <laughs> in Norman tonight. Sam Brown joins us with more. Sam. Waco actually stormed, but that's all right. The Sooners do have a crucial matchup against Baylor. We'll let you know how they're preparing for the game. And Swaggy Maggie and Stosh picks up, picked up some awards on Monday. If you don't know them by now, just stick around. Sports is next.
Welcome back. Trey Young and the OU basketball team managed to end their six game skit against Kansas State this weekend, but their work is far from over. Next up is a showdown tonight in Waco against the Baylor Bears. Josh Calloway is at Lloyd Noble Center with more. With only two games left in the regular season, it is go time for Trey Young and the Sooners to try and pad their tournament resume. After ending their six game losing streak to Kansas State on Saturday, they now turn to a really tough road matchup tonight against Baylor. This season has been really topsy turvy for OU, and they're hoping that this past win can help them settle back down, get back to the basics, and just have fun playing the game again. My main focus is, is just playing, uh, just playing and, and having fun, um, enjoying this, and enjoying this experience. I mean, the, the roller coaster that we've been on, I mean, is definitely tough. But you got to have fun. Um, I mean, that's, that's what we were doing early on in the season, and we got to get back to doing that. It's good to win a game, you know, so that, uh, that's a big boost right there. But now we got to come back and back it up with uh, preparation for Baylor and then uh, go in there Tuesday and, and play well. And uh, they've been playing great, so our guys understand that and uh, how tough it is uh, on the road any time. And now we're playing against a Baylor team that's been playing well. Behind 44 points from Trey Young, the Sooners put up 98 in a defeat of Baylor in Norman back in January. It's going to be very interesting to see if he and the boys can try to replicate that offensive performance in round two, this time at the Farrell Center in Waco. Josh Calloway, OU Knightley. Thank you, Josh. Meanwhile, the red-hot women's basketball team is in Austin tonight to take on the seventh-ranked Texas Longhorns. The Sooners have won seven of their last nine and are hoping to end the regular season on a high note. Last time these two teams met, Texas took the win in Norman, but if defending Big 12 Player of the Week, BV Pierre of the Week, can keep up her play, the Sooners could surprise a lot of people. The OU baseball team is in the Big D tonight at 6.30 to take on Dallas Baptist. After a slow start to the season, the boys bounced back last weekend and won three of their four games. Sophomore Nathan Wiles will start on the mound against the Patriots as he looks for his first win of the season. The women's gymnastics team kept up their number one spot in the rankings this week and won some Big 12 award awards along the way. Sophomore superstar Maggie Nichols won the Gymnast of the Week award for the fourth time this season and freshman, freshman Anastasia Webb won Newcomer of the Week for just the sixth time in eight weeks. How about that? Next up for the girls is a home meet on Saturday against Michigan. All right, let's talk some Thunder basketball. Last night, they took the dub at home against the Orlando Magic, 112 to 105. Paul George led all scores with 26 points, and although Russell Westbrook shot 3 of 12 on the night, he still picked up 12 boards and 11 assists. OKC has a three-game road trip ahead of them before heading back home for a primetime matchup against James Harden and the Houston Rockets. And JaVale McGee hit a jump shot in the Warriors' win last night against the New York Knicks. That's, that, I mean, that's not exactly shocking news, but I mean, to John Stewart, John Stewart sure looked like it was. The former late night host was sitting courtside at MSG last night, and I mean, the reaction kind of speaks for itself, guys. It, JaVale McGee's not known for being a jump shooter, but at the same time, I have a feeling he doesn't really watch a lot of basketball because he seemed pretty shocked. Yeah, he was uh, pretty excited. That would have been my case for sure. Yeah, <laughs> he probably knew that the Sooners were taking on uh, the Bears in Waco tonight. Waco, not Norman. All right. Waco. We'll uh, be, su be sure to tune into that one. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Sam. All right, thanks, Sam. Still to come on OU Nightly, a camera hog in the Golden State has everybody laughing. I'm Cal Day at the Update Desk. Oklahoma is again ranked in the bottom 10. That's according to the U.S. News and World Report's 2018 rankings of the best states. The Sooner State checked in at 43 overall, one spot higher than last year's ranking. Healthcare and education were two of the biggest indicators that decided the placement. Oklahoma performed best in quality of life and worst in health care. The study ranked Iowa the best state in the country. Back to you in the studio. All right, thank you for those numbers, Cal. This San Diego news anchor at KFMP, here, watch this video here, was shocked when a scarlet ibis swooped onto her head. Look at that thing. I'd be shocked as well. They tell us Sophie is one of several ibis ambassadors at the San Diego Zoo. She gets her beautiful color from the food she eats. All right, I don't know about that. I'm, um, I think I'm out on the zoo day. Yeah, I'm not set. really sure where that one came from. 
them. I guess they were just enjoying some guests. They, they were the having a studio Zeus uh, segment afterwards. See, that's I think. so fun. Yeah, uh, I wish I'd we be could shocked. do something like that. But then again, I don't want to burn my head. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it would be really alarming to <laughs> give the news with a bird on your head. But I bet you guys could do it. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. What is uh, the weather fact of the day? What do you got for well, us? Well, we have rain on the brain. And check this out. This is the rain totals for the past 14 days in Oklahoma and it kind of looks like a rainbow and if you look to the most like south the southeasterly corner of the state I think is up to almost a foot wow. of rain and as you go all the way out into the panhandle there's hardly any rain accumulation out there at all so we have a very very diverse rain accumulation in the past 14 days and it's just going to continue to be crazy. All right, thanks Marissa and thank you for watching OU Nightly brought to you by the Gaylord College at the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you back here tomorrow night live at 4:30. Have a great evening. Good night.